Just give me an overview of Aramco's involvement in the Sharik program and what is the ultimate end goal here? Well, you know, as you know, Sharik is a very well thought out uh, strategic initiative by the government to elevate uh, public uh, private sector uh, contribution and collaboration. It is creating and enabling new opportunities for major investment and is serving as a strong catalyst of economic growth here in the kingdom. In fact, uh, through Sharik, we are moving forward with FID on a number of key projects for Aramco and for our uh, global partners that otherwise would not have been uh, feasible, commercially feasible. And these projects support various aspects of our uh, business and would support our supply chain. At the same time, it is contributing to industrial investment uh, capabilities in the kingdom and also helping to raise uh, the industrial ecosystem uh, within the kingdom. This is just uh, the beginning and I believe there will be more to come in the future. And you asked about the ultimate, the expectation that through this uh, support and incentives, the private sector will contribute up to $1.35 trillion by 2030 uh, in terms of investment. So a little more specific here, what are some of the projects that Aramco has been working on and what impact are they actually having in Saudi Arabia? What is important for us is, is to localize our supply chain and create uh, certain industries that are important and critical for our reliability. Some of the projects that we are, uh, uh, the five projects that were approved by Sharik and uh, yesterday were uh, casting and forging, metal plates uh, manufacturing, engine uh, manufacturing, and uh, Google Clouds uh, with Cognites. And there is a project with Total expanding an existing refinery and including more liquid to chemical. So in reality, uh, some of these projects are important for us, as I said, our supply chain, and uh, it will increase our uh, reliability as a company and at the same time we'll uh, diversify our business as we are aiming to have up to 4 million barrels liquid to chemical by 2030. One of the other key questions that investors have is what does all of this mean for Aramco's financials? Critics might say that these funds could be better used if they were perhaps reinvested back into the business rather than on more public private projects. What do you say to that? Well, these projects, as I said, they have a huge impact, as I said, in our reliability. If, if you know, we have been through many crises. If you remember the attacks in our facility in Abgeg and Khares, we find out that our supply chain was not fully ready in terms of certain metal blades were not readily available. So casting and forging is important because we are ensuring that rig manufacturing, uh, tankers to transport our crudes, platforms and others important to be uh, next to us close by. So our supply chain availability is important. We've went through the COVID uh, for two years and supply chain was interrupted. So having a localization of materials and equipment that is important and critical for Saudi Aramco as well as other companies is, is important. At the same time, diversification of our business is also something that we are working on. We are looking at to diversify, increase our revenue from uh, other sectors.